Hi everyone, today I want to talk about error messages in GHC, sort of everyone's, everyone's favorite complaint about GHC is that the error messages are, are really hard to understand. So I wanna go through a couple of common error messages that we see and, and explore exactly what GHC is trying to tell you with these error messages. Hopefully this will be useful to you. Um, before we get into all of that, I just wanna say maybe you've noticed my surroundings have changed. Um, so uh, uh, my family and I are fortunate enough to have a, a summer place in Martha's Vineyard, which is a small island off the coast of Massachusetts. Massachusetts. Um, there are nice beaches here. If you happen to be in the area, drop a line. Maybe we can meet up on the beach. Um, anyway, uh, so back to error messages. So, so uh, let's start with, with, with something simple. So if, if let's say I have, oh, some value x here, and we're just going to say x equals not y. Well, you know, x really isn't y. So that makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Um, and we try to load this, and then we get an error. So let's look at this error message couldn't match expected type bool with actual type car. So one particular area that I hear a lot of people getting tripped up by is this expected and actual. So let's think about what GHC does when, when it's trying to understand this. So, so by the way, let, let me just uh, make sure we all know, right? So not is a function that, ex that uh, see there I, there I am using that word expects, that takes in a bool and returns another bool. And y here, of course, has type car. Right, so, so y is a character, that means it's not a bool, so we can't call not on it. This, this doesn't make sense as a Haskell program. Um, so here in this error message, what, what the way that GH, or to produce this error message, what GHC does is it first looks at not, and then it tries to figure out, okay, what is the type of not? And it knows that not is declared in the prelude, and it's declared with this type that I've given in the comment. So it, it sort of figures that out, puts that off to the side. Then it looks at this y and tries to figure out, well, what type does this have? So y here is a character literal, and so a character literal is going to have the character type, or car, type car. So I can write this up here. Um, and then it says, okay, can I feed something of type car to the function not? Um, in other words, does this type match up with this type? And so the way that it thinks about this is that not expects something of a certain type. Um, and so in this case, it expects something of type bool, and it finds the actual type of the argument is car. So that's what's going on here in the error message when it says couldn't match expected type bool with actual type car, right? One of them is what the function is expecting to get, and the other is what it is actually getting. Um, so we can, we can see different varieties of this, right? If I write five of type int here, then we're gonna see the same error but expected bool and got int. If let's say I use head here, right? That's, that pulls off the first element of a list. It's a bad function, you should never use it, but it happens to be convenient here. So head has this type. Um, and here it's expecting type list of A, but it actually gets int. And so this is a very, very common error, this expected and actual. And now we can see that expected says something about the function or the context that we're in. Um, so it doesn't just have to be a function call. There are other contexts that, that might expect certain kinds of types, um, but, but most often functions, really. Um, and then we can also have an actual type, which is we look at some expression in our program and try to figure out what type does it have, and that's its actual type. Um, OK, so that's, that's one kind of error that we can have, but there's actually quite, quite a few others. So let's, let's look at other possibilities here. Um, so let's, let's get rid of that. And now if we have some function f, let's say we have something that looks like this. And I say fx equals x equals x. Right? We want to see, is, is the equality function sort of reflexive on this value x? Well, that works just fine. Right? But now I want to compare x is less than x. And so we get a different error here. We get a could not deduce error. So we say could not deduce ord a arising from the use of, of less than. OK, so what is this really saying? So when GHC sees an overloaded uh, function, in this case, the less than function, right? In Haskell, we write operators, but these are just functions. I, I could, instead of writing it like this, I could write my, my, my operator use like this. And this makes it look much more like a function. The function's name is the less than operator. Um, I'm going to write it in this notation. It's called infix. Um, uh, uh, just because it's more familiar, but it's just a function call. 
And so whenever we use an overloaded function uh, in, in Haskell, there might be a constraint. So f here is actually an overloaded function, and f has this constraint eek a, um, but less than here has a constraint ord a. So when I use less than, we need to be able to prove that a, whatever a may be, a is some type variable, um, th that whatever a may be, um, we don't know, uh, but it must be in the ORD type class. There must be an instance or some assumption that A is in the ORD type class. Um, and so GHC tries to prove that. So it works very hard to try to think, okay, can I prove ORD A? And in this case, no, we can't prove ORD A. Um, we do know eek A, and so we can we get could not deduce ORD A from the context eek A. That means that from what? From the knowledge that we know here, we know that eek a is true, but can we use that to prove ord a? No, we can't. Um, the other little piece of this is arising from the use of less than. So these constraints always come from a certain thing, a certain construct. In this case, it's the use of the less than operator, but it might be some other function. There are a few constructs, like for example, when you use the do notation that requires a monad constraint um, normally. So um, th there are a variety of ways that these constraints can arise. In this case, it's arising from the use of less than. So this error message, just in these first two lines, gives us a lot of information. It says what GHC is trying to prove, it's trying to prove ORD A, what it has assumed, EK, because we've put that in the type signature, and then what the thing is that we typed that caused all of this to happen in the first place. Um, okay, let's keep looking at other errors. What if I say here, instead of X is less than X, what if I say not X? So now when I compile, um, I get could not match expected type bool with actual type A. So, so far, so good. This kind of makes sense with what we should expect from, from what I said earlier, that not is expecting a bool, but actually the type of X, well, what type does that have? Well, here it's this argument to F. F is declared to take an argument of type A, so that means X must have type A. And that's exactly what we get here. And then we get this extra little gloss here, a is a rigid type variable bound by blah, 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 blah. What on earth does this mean, a rigid type variable? So it means that A in this case is some unknown type, but it doesn't equal any other type. Um, so in GHC, as GHC is trying to figure out your types, there's actually two different kinds of type variables. There's something called a unification variable and another thing called a scolum variable. Um, so let's take a, an, another example here. So built into Haskell, right, we have undefined has type A. Right? Undefined, we can use undefined anywhere we want. So if I write not undefined, does that work? What happened there? Oh, I hit the wrong button. Um, uh, yes, yes, that does work, even though we said undefined has type A. The reason for that is that when I use undefined here, so undefined here has type A, but really that's just shorthand for for all A dot A. And whenever I use undefined, I get to choose what A is. So that makes A a unification variable and says A can be anything at all. Oh, let's make A bool. Great. Um, on the other hand, going back to this error here when I say not X, this A isn't a unification variable. This is one of these scolum variables. Right? It means that we've declared A in a type signature somewhere, and X has that type, and X doesn't have any other type. It has type A. And we don't want to confuse A with bool. Right? A is its own type, distinct from all others. And so that's what rigid here means. It means that I can't just decide that A equals type bool. Instead, we're going to get this error saying we can't match bool with actual type A. Um, and in these error messages, there's more information the further down we go. Um, so in particular here, we have some context information. Um, so this used to be more useful. I actually don't think this context information is really paying its way anymore because we have this stuff down here. So it says exactly where the error arises. I'm not sure we need this in the, in the, all, the all of this stuff. But GHC provides it anyway. Um, this can be quite useful. Relevant bindings include. So sometimes there are variables in scope, and knowing what types they have can be very helpful. So here we see that X has type A and that F has type A or a bool. In this particular case, the fact that F has this type I don't think is all that relevant, but the fact that X has type A is very relevant for understanding this particular error. 
Um, there are lots of other errors, but these are, I think, are ones that people come across the most. If there are particular errors you want me to explore, uh, leave something in the comments and, and we can explore that. I also want to give the chance, uh, take a chance here to um, uh, promote a, a new initiative that um, a few folks I've, I've met online and I are, are, are starting. Um, uh, Quetzalcoatl is, is the sort of the, the, the chief Yukaru here. Um, and the, um, uh, that is this repo right here where we want to sort of explore challenges that uh, Haskellers have with error messages. So these particular error messages that I'm describing today, maybe there's a better phrasing of them. Right? right now, the error messages are written by we compiler hackers. And we know a lot about programming languages. And so expected and actual, that makes sense to us. Things like occurs check, that makes sense to us. Does that make sense to you all? Maybe not. Um, and so here, this, this repo is really an opportunity to, um, uh, to post uh, issues where you say, ah, this error could be improved. Here's a concrete suggestion. And maybe through debate and, and, and collaboration, we can come up with better phrasings of error messages that we can then eventually put into GHC. So I, I just want to uh, uh, plug that. Uh, please do contribute. This is a very new initiative, and we would love to have more people join in and try to build out exactly the way that this should work to be the most useful. Um, anyway, thanks very much for watching. I hope this has been interesting. Bye.